All right, welcome to Unit 1617, Statistics. So you may be wondering, why are we studying statistics? Well, statistics are everywhere. We see graphs and charts in many um, different forms all around the world. We see them in newspapers, we see them on the news, you see them in textbooks, in geography class, etc. But how do you know if the statistics are reliable or if they're valid and who collected them? Should we even be looking at it? So here's some examples I just found online. So there's a pie chart here of um, different types of bullying and you can nicely see in the display that name calling, shoving, and threats are the bigger pieces of the pie, meaning they represent higher percentage of, the, of how students feel they get bullied. So it's a nice way to display information. Here we see what is a bar graph, um, and we can clearly see which type of fruit had the highest sales in that year. And here we see a line graph where we can see a downward trend um, in the data, which is, again, representing teen substance use, which is good to see. So again, we see these things in multiple places. We're going to go through some vocabulary in this first video. So first of all, people collect data because they need or want information. Instead of surveying the entire population, which could be people or items that they want to study, um, we usually just look at a small portion. This small portion is called a sample. Sampling can be used to gain the information um, in a much easier and quicker way than trying to survey the entire population. Again, if you wanted to know something about all of Canadians, you don't have time to go knock on everyone's door all across Canada and ask them the question. So instead, you're likely to just take a sample of it to gather, gather your data. Statistics Canada, on the other hand, is one company that does try to survey the entire population, and this is called a census. So they send out a survey every five years to every Canadian household and collect those back and then um, analyze the data about income and age and religion and all of those things. And then they post this on the website for the public to see, and that's how we kind of generalize what a Canadian is um, in that year or for those years, how many people are working, etc., how many... Uh, kids in the family and all of that. So that would be considered a census. Now, like I said, most of the time we don't do a census. We just do a survey or do a sample, survey with just a sample. Um, the way you actually collect the data can vary. So you could do an observation, so literally sit in the CAF and observe the students, um, you know, how many students buy their lunch versus bring their lunch. You could conduct an interview, so you could go personally ask people or use a telephone to interview them. You could create a questionnaire where they could do a survey either in person, online, etc. Um, and you could test a product, take measurements, and all of that. All of those would be considered primary sources because you yourself collected the data. However, this isn't always um, possible. Sometimes we have to look up the data in, a, in the internet in a textbook, from Statistics Canada website, etc. Because A, it's too time consuming to collect ourselves. Maybe um, the information we want is historical. So if we wanted to know <clears throat> the average income of families in the 1900s, we can't go and ask them. We have to look this up somewhere in some database. So those would be considered secondary sources. So just to recap the vocabulary, population is the entire group or items being studied and to do the whole population would be considered a census, whereas a sample is just a small group of those items which is chosen to represent the whole population. Primary data is collected by the person who is going to use it, so if you were doing the survey, you would collect that information yourself, versus secondary, you are looking up stuff that has already been collected and made available by another company or another person. Now we have a few more terms to go over. Basically, we need to make sure that our survey isn't biased. So a biased survey is not representative of the full population. For example, if we wanted to know the average height of Americans and we only base this on the heights of NBA players, I'm pretty sure the number is going to be a little bit higher than the average. So in that case, we are not collecting um, a representative population. We are using a biased sample and our results would not be good. Here's some more examples if we wanted to know which Canadian team. Um, all of Canadians expect to win the Stanley Cup, but we only surveyed 1,000 people selected from the Toronto phone book. That might give us biased results. You might get the Toronto Maple Leafs as the expected to win um, versus a more general answer if you spread out your survey across the country. If you wanted to assess the opinions of Canadian people on increasing health care funding and you only counted the number of callers for or against a radio call-in show, that might be biased. 
because those people are listening to that radio call-in show because they already have a vested interest in that topic. So you're going to get an emotional response um, and it might be biased because those people are already tuned in. Lastly, if we wanted to determine the legal driving age for Canadian teenagers and we interviewed 2,000 high school students from across Canada, we might get biased results because we're not asking parents of these teenagers, we're not asking driving instructors, we're not asking police officers that witness accidents all the time. So again, that could be an example of a biased survey. Now, a survey is reliable if it's something that can be duplicated in another survey. So if you did it over and over and over, you would keep getting the same results. For example, if, if you went to a football game and asked and you asked 100 of their fans what their favorite sport was, you're likely to get football as one of their favorite sports. This sample might be biased. As opposed to doing that same question 100 times to randomly select the people at a shopping mall. If you did this randomly, you'd probably get the same results over and over, but these are more reliable. So more reliable because they're not being biased. A survey is valid if it represents the entire population. So for example, Sonia wants to find out what percent of students in her school have a driver's license. She pulls her class and it comes back that 47% of the students in her class have their license. She then generalizes this to the whole school. This will be inaccurate. It's not valid because in the office it says only 28% of the students have a driver's license. Her sample size may be small and it's only in her class which may be grade 12s, so that's why her number might be higher than actual. Here we see a diagram displaying something that's valid and reliable, reproducible and on target, versus just reliable or just valid. And ideally we want both. Again, recap of vocab. And lastly, things to consider. Does your survey invade privacy? Is it ethical? Do you want it to be anonymous and is it controversial? These are things we will revisit later in the semester.